back there. I'm going to say prayer. Why, I'm back. Be glad to. Bow our heads. Our most loving and gracious God, we thank you for this blessed day. We ask that you give the guidance and the, and the thought processes for our elected officials here to make the decisions that place before them. We ask that you be with each and every one here as we leave tonight. Give us safe travel home. Bless everyone here and their ability to be here. And God bless our children. Amen. Amen. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everybody sign in, please. Get restarted. It started off. It said it's restarted. Anybody sign in? No, mine's not working. Richard. Nominations cease. Do we have a second? Second. Force vote. How are you going to do it, Gal? Just, just uh, vote. vote. Yes. And it's in order that we have a motion to elect him by acclamation. So I make a motion that we well, do I ask that. for a voice vote. Yeah, okay. Johnny said so moved, so let's go. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Orton. No. Dang. Yes. Bird. Yes. No. Fields. Yes. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. Would you restate that? Because I'm not sure I understand. Would you restate the motion? The motion is to voice vote. But for, for Mr. Bain. For Mr. Bain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, this is hard for me because I respect and appreciate both of these gentlemen so much. I think Mike has done an excellent job. I think Clint would do an excellent job. And it's really, really hard for me to, to cast a vote either way. Um, but I have to... Uh, have to do something you do and it's hard I mean it's really hard and it's more important than those judges on the voice when they say oh this is a difficult decision um, <clears throat> then the vote is for Clint right that's correct okay then yes okay Esther? yes Morgan yes right yes all right, Mr. Bain, put your advice chair in the floor, and uh, you need to come up and take over the proceedings. Thank you for those kind words.
Vice Chair. We have a nomination for Mr. Burge for Vice Chair. I'll second that motion. We have a second for Mr. O'Work. I make a motion that nomination cease and that he's voted elected by um, acclamation. I'll agree with that. You need a second. All those in favor? I second. All those in favor say? Aye. 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 Um, okay. Burge is vice chair. Yeah, we have an addendum that we're going to be adding under the consent order. I think everybody has a copy of it. It's, uh, it'll be 3B, 5, and 6. Uh, 3B, 5 is approved Camel County High School Cross Country to travel to Nashville for Tennessee Classic Cross Country Meet September 15th through September 17th, and also to approve Camel County High School Cross Country team, team to travel to Cary, North Carolina for a cross country meet on October the 6th, 2017 through October the 7th, 2017. So the first thing we have on the agenda tonight is a recognition of guests. So the first on the uh, on the agenda is Ms. Karen Mills with Religious Timer Lake. Um, Mr. Bain, this was supposed to be on the October okay. agenda. Karen at this time is in Yosemite Park getting ready to go on that 200 mile hike. So, okay. so it's we'll, supposed to be in the October. We'll have that added back yes. the October again. So Gail, if you'll add it on the October piece. Okay. Uh, the next guest on the agenda is Isaiah. Michael and Bridget Lawson, are they here? If you'll come forward. I'll allow you all to come forward and, and speak to the board. Lucas, could somebody raise the microphone or Gail or somebody if they need to use the microphone? Oh, they're the ones who want that The mayor won't sign the deed. <clears throat> okay. Welcome to the board. Let me go ahead and. Uh, I bring your comments. I'm Isaiah Lawson. I'm happy against help. I know Mr. Knapper does know. We're here today to speak with you all about school nurses. My daughter, you know, she's seven years old. She has that place. She has had numerous seizures. We are, you know, caring her for Vanderbilt at this time. Uh, she does have, you know, caramel seizures. She has what's great upon me for 40 at the time. Uh, as of right now, you know, we don't have enough school nurses. My daughter's at police school at 1230 every day. Charles is a nurse can't stay there. She's on the bus that day. It takes a certified nurse to finish, you know, uh, a controlled substance, which that's that is. And she has to have that if the seizure lasts more than five minutes. As things are right now in the county with the ambulances, first responders, if they end up the valley, it's going to take, you know, someone at least 15 to 20 minutes to get there. A child, you know, that place greater, don't have anything to do with And we'd like to see if we could get some more school nurses. So is she, she's having to leave school every day after lunch, is that what you're saying? Because there's not a nurse there to administer the medication if needed, if she has a seizure, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And Mr. Lawson, uh, after he came into our office, Ms. Lane, I uh, had prepared you a folder in yellow that outlines children we have and and the board sympathizes with your situation 100% with that. My daughter, she's not the only one. There's several students, you know, that in the county that had problems. There's diabetes, there's four other seizures, you know, what is our nurse situation there? We have a nurse that travels there half a day. Is that what it is? Miss Lay, can you uh, answer that question? Do we just have a, does a nurse go to Valley View half a day, then go to a different location that's second half, or what's the? the uh, the nurse, Miss uh, Donna, starts out there in the morning and then she goes to the college middle school. Most of our nurses share two schools and um, our three public uh, mountain schools, Valley, um, El Valley, Wide Open Wind, they kind of share on a half two basis on those three schools and we'll try to get to them at least once a week. So we are, you know, straight students. 
Mr. Donovan, would it be worthwhile to sit down with the nurses along with Mr. Lay and do a review of our current nurses, where we have them, what their schedules are, and, and bring back a recommendation to the board if, uh, if something needs to be recommended, maybe uh, add or change? How does the board feel about that? Or does any of the board members have any other comments? How many registered nurses do we have currently? Because I know that it takes an actual registered nurse to administer this medicine. Ms. Lay? We have four registered nurses and two LPs. 13 schools. And where did you say two LP? For two nurses. For two nurses. For two full time nurses. And the district pays for two nurses I think it would be a good idea to sit down with the nurses, review the, what plan we have in place now, how many nurses, where they're going, and see it and bring back a recommendation if we think if it's needed to uh, change that in any way. Yeah, I think it would be a great idea for all the nurses to, to be at that meeting. I think it would be a good idea. Mr. Ross, is this an injection your daughter takes every day? Yes. It's residual. Oh. And you have just a certain amount of time to administer this, am I correct? If her seizure lasts more than five minutes, then you get your eyes stuck in regularly to her to stop her seizure. If she has a big breathing noise, like we said, four times. Okay. Thank you. 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 Well, I would just like to say that I'm very sorry uh, that you are facing that problem, but I think we as a board will do what we can to help you out with that problem, whatever the process they work out. We appreciate that. You know, we just like, my daughter, she loves school. When I get her back in there, you know, what she deserves, she deserves to go to school full time. Agreed. As well as other students in this county that has, you know, medical problems. Parents shouldn't have to worry about going to work and their kids going to school. Is you know, is my kid going to be okay while they're there? You know, we need to know that they have a cure, someone there that can do. Well, we agree. And I think when Mr. Knight would then come back with us with recommendations, this board will look at that very seriously and, and come up with the best solution we can to address the situation. Thank, Thank you, all Mr. Ryan. I have a oh, comment. Yes. Uh, last year we had the same situation. At Carable. My memory serves for Carable, and uh, I guess it apparently got resolved. But I brought up then about the ideal of substitute nurses. We have a lot of retired uh, LPNs and RNs in the community, and actually talked to a few that were interested. Did we ever explore that ideal? Which I think at the time Mr. Rutherford might have been over the nurses. And did we ever? Does anybody know if we ever explored that idea? Or not? I know my daughter's a nurse practitioner and she was been when I mentioned her she said she would be interested in doing some time so I mean I think that's something we need to explore that these people need help immediately and it's not something if, if, if it's something we can do now you know I just think we need to explore every avenue that we've got and uh, I guess that would be your call to make that decision and try to get get something working on it <coughs> quick and I'm sure the board wouldn't have any problem with that so no we will get a plan in place by Friday to look for volunteers to uh, Immediate so if I understand their situation right, you're you've got a nurse for a half day, right? And you're taking your kid out of school the other half. Because that nurse moves to the, uh, I'm assuming so down here. You a, leave and go to uh, La Follette. I'm assuming second half. Is that correct? And if we had a system to where you know somebody could come and work half a day, uh, that would be willing to volunteer. Yes. The question I would have for one of the nurses, if we do go the route of volunteers, my understanding that that volunteer nurse, if they're retired, would have to have their certifications before they would be allowed to even volunteer. Okay. And, uh, and the background checks, and I feel like that's something we can take care of. You know, if, uh, I absolutely them. agree. If they're willing to volunteer, I think we should be able to take care of their background check. We yeah. have a difficult time as Sub nurses as is, and they get paid the same as a uh, regular sub. Have we 
have we advertised that before? Because, I mean, I mean, how do we advertise it to? Yeah, it was in the greatest men, just as no one's nurses that were, you know, retired. But it was hard to give for us to be all. have a hand out, heel for, hand out here from the Tennessee Department of Health uh, relating to health care professionals and health care procedures in the school. And it says that basically, if I'm correct, that you can train school personnel to do some limited uh, administering drugs. Is that something that we have pursued or something that would be acceptable in your case? Um, I mean, someone can be trained. I mean, it'd be a controlled substance. I don't know if you can train someone to admit it. Yeah, I don't know either. Well, Probably well, not. If you're at the point that the child, there's someone who don't know whether or not the child needs it or not and administers it, it's going to hurt the child. So, that, you know, that has to be something on that. And the distinguish between sure. the medical marijuana and the medical marijuana. Sure. I understand. Or should they die? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Did you have another comment on that, Sharon? They just passed that law that we can train. It has to be under a volunteer basis that you can train to administer that deal. It has to be an RN trained. Right. My concern with that is I feel like that it's going to be a teacher or an aide that's going to, you know, that's fine. But then to me, they bring school to teach. I bring school to be a nurse. I just hate for that teacher to have that much more on them. And then they have to assess the just like they said, they have to assist their breathing as well. Once it's administered, you've got to administer it for three minutes. It's inserted rectally. So, and then we would have to train them annually, which is fine if you all pass that, but they're going to be on our license. Yeah. So that's another thing you need to look at. Yeah. I don't know how everyone feels about that, but in my opinion, I think nurses need to be doing those type of duties that are well trained, that are administering medicine to these children before a teacher. It's, it's, not, it's not like a pill. You're giving right. you know, right. to assist that pill. It's inserted regularly when they're having a seizure. Yep. Okay. Suppressive breathing, therefore, CPR, right. ABR. Okay. Well, Mr. is going to move forward to the volunteer maybe by Friday and set up a meeting. At the, nurses and Miss Lay and, and the long term uh, solutions and hopefully we'll be able to come up with something. Is her leaving at twelve thirty every day right now it's not it's not a good solution for anybody. Right. No. no. We okay. would like to have something done that she can go to school full time and enjoy it. Her classroom's not being disrupted every day. So we would really appreciate that. Fully agree. Thank you all. Thank you, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, the next on the agenda of the guest is uh, Ms. Sharon Marlowe. My sister has it. Mr. Wayne, I would respectfully request that Mr. Holder and I switch places. Oh, switch places? Okay, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bob Holder. Uh, he got that on him. Oh, I'm sorry. I checked that off. Yeah, there's a Robert Robertson. Robert Robertson from Davis Chapel. At the Davis Chapel Community. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hi. I'm here on behalf of the Davis Chapel community. I know y'all heard of me. I'm a troublemaker. But what I want to do is I want to make it back into the Davis community center. I want to make it where people can come back to the community center and have the functions that they had before. And I know there's a lot of things that you have to do to get it ready, a lot of finance you have to have. But I'm willing to take on that chance. And it's been a long road for me to get where I'm at now. I didn't know I had to come to you ladies and gentlemen. I only went by what I was told to go to the county, commissioner's meeting, and everything else. So that's why you haven't seen me, because I was doing what I was asked to do. I had what I showed, what I had to get, and to prove to them what I wanted to do. I want to make it back to a family-oriented community center. I want to put in a gazebo, a playground, a bench, game for children and everything else for where it's not just made for adults 
I know it was made for a cemetery and everything else. I respect all that. But I got went out and got 251 signatures to make this back into a community center. I'm sorry I don't have anybody here because I don't know why, but they just got their lives, but they got, I got their signatures with it. So I got it. It doesn't mean they're going to back me. I'm not going to lie to you because God done it through. But I feel if I get it back open and let the people know, not just in the community, but all over town, that they will show up, that they will help me and my to get it where it was before. A lot of them that I heard from them said that the reason that the community center failed is because there was no way to get a hold of nobody. Well, they can use it. There was no numbers on it, no nothing. And I, and Miss, I know you know Nash Tulane. She put her number on that door after I started the petition, where people would know where to go and to call to use the community center. The past four years I've been down here, I have not seen anybody but the voting registration use that community center. And behind all the stories that I've heard with the community center, a lot of people want it back, and a lot of them don't. I'm not going to lie to you, which I can respect their opinion and everything else. But you have a West Side Community Center. You don't have an East Side Community Center. And you have the financial part. I don't know, but I'm willing to take that chance to see if it'll work. I mean, I want to make changes, and I want to make it work. Everybody has a chance. The use community center. Not just the community, everybody. I've been from one side of this town to the other get signatures. Some of them say they didn't want to sign my petition because they're afraid of the county commission. I don't know why, but that's what they told me. Some of them didn't even know it was there. And some of them are teachers. And they would love to take their kids back here and show them the past history. The Love Pilot House. They have been there. They know what it's about. And I said, well, what about the school? Didn't even know it exists. But it's the last school of one storeroom house in Campbell County. And everybody, these people buried in the cemetery back there in the road as I met, have had family there that worked there, taught there, and everything else. They love to bring their kids back. And let them come back to history. Um, I know it all deals with history, but everything boils down to can you make it work? It's just like a business. If you start a business, you don't know if it's going to work. But you're willing to put your heart and soul back into it to make sure that it does work. Regardless of what you do, you do not quit. I drove a truck for 30 years. I felt like quitting, but I took the responsibility to take the challenge. And the loss of sleep and everything else. I took that, and I'm willing to take the chance of that. So, as the 501C that was supposed to be brought up, I called the IRS, and she gave me a code if I could change the thing. If I filed one for right now, I would get denied because there's one already on file. I got a hold of the business part of Tennessee today. They're sending me out paperwork that I need for the community center on the taxes, things on that. So I have it set on my fingers and did nothing this whole time that I'm trying to get this thing back. I'm learning what I need to do and how to go about it. I have a couple people that will back me on it and teach me. I got Ms. Nance who's going to show me the financial part of it and everything responsibilities. I got people that's willing to be on the board and everything else. I said, well, I can't do anything until the final decision is made. That's why I can tell you. I have volunteers that are going to help me put it back together. It doesn't take money to paint it if you know how to do it. I've done making for 10 years. I got kids who've done it for 10 years and I know a lot of volunteers know how to do things too. So yes, it takes money, but some of the stuff you can do, you can do yourself. Well, I've told you three times. I know. This will be the fourth time I'm gonna tell you. I know. We made an agreement with the county commission. I know. And this board voted unanimously to transfer that property to the board of Ed to the county commission for seventy thousand dollars a year for an SRO. And I can't help that R.L. or E.L. Morton will not sign the deed. I'm only going to buy what I told sir. I mean, okay. I, I mean he, he it's, it's out of our control. You guys. That's all I know. Unless the board wants to give up our SRO. Well. And 
and we voted unanimously for that. I remember. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm only going to buy what I was told. Okay. Everything else, I'm only, I mean, I've been trying. I'm not a quitter. And I'm going to keep trying, and you know, but if it happens, hey, I'm, I'm not going to be mad. Everything else. But the EFL, you know, you told me that. I know you did. So my you question. Know, as far as, you know, liability insurance, I'm checking into that. But, you know, I just don't <laughs> want to see that I did not try. Right. Miss okay, Ms. So Ms. I, I don't want to be called a failure or nothing else. I am going to try, and I know exactly what you told me and everything else, but I just went by what you told me. Hey, I'm not signing this because it has discrepancy with the county. The county doesn't want to be involved in it and everything else. So, and then he said the school board. Yeah. So, Ms. Hadley, do you have a question? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Robertson, yes. for coming and sharing your um, desire to have this take place. My question is, is what would it take to get it back to that, and what process would you have to go through to get it there? Well, or could we even do it? You know? that, that EL, they're not signing the deed over. So is the property and the possession of the county right now? It's still ours. It is still ours it right is. now because it's not. We've signed the deed over to the county, and he will not sign it because of the terminology being used as a veteran cemetery. He wants to use it potentially as something else. Mm -hmm. And at the last county commission meeting, the commission advised him again to put it on the agenda for the next Monday night to get it approved for him to sign that deed. Now, whether he's going to sign or not, I have no idea. Sir, I know the, DA, the VA don't, don't do the cemetery part, and I know the last meeting they had, I was there at the DAB turned them down. Yeah. They don't have the manpower or other funds. To and do. I've talked to the Davis family, <laughs> along with Mr. Nidefer. You've talked to Jerry Davis. And what has he told you? He told me. He just wanted the names that I've got, and I give them to him. And he told me that, you know, he can get it back any time he wants. And I told him, I said, go ahead, Jerry. You're not going to bother me. If you want it back, go ahead. And he said, well, if I, if I don't stop, he's going to see me in another building. And I said, well, why would you want to do that? If you can take the property back right now, go do it. Why tell me you're going to put me in another building? I have nothing to do with it. If you take it back and it's yours, I'll stop. That, that's it. You know, I mean, why tell me, take me somewhere else? I've done nothing wrong. You're doing right. the same thing I'm doing. You want to tore down because you're tired of looking at it, but it's not the building's fault. But you also say dead people don't talk. Mr. Rogersman, we appreciate y'all coming in and all your comments. And well, I guess the Monday night's county commission meeting, we'll see if they put it on the agenda and approve uh, to move the veto. Or does any other uh, board members have any comments? How does the first district people feel about it? Or the second district people, I should say? Um, you know, we spoke to a lot of people in Davis Chapel and they don't want that place turned uh, tore down. They want to be able to use it again if it ever comes available. But the way I'm understanding it right now, if the county commission still has the property there's nothing we can really do right now um so after monday's we meeting to, I, I we think really need to table this until the county commission makes their mind up on what they're going to do and we can go from there um i do not want to sacrifice the sro right now yeah where did that sro go fifth district somewhere didn't it i'm not sure where he went did he go to win or white oak one he went to when no, we had one at White Oak and when it was shared, so one of them went to White. One of them, Mark stated White Oak, and the other gentleman came and said, We okay. Well, we appreciate you coming in, appreciate your comments. All right, appreciate you. All right. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, Mr. Holder, do you, you want to be on the that's first? tonight to address the board <clears throat> for what I understand the board might plan to do a little later. That is to request funds from the fund balance in a rather large amount from what, what I've been told. I've been asked by teachers and parents and people in the community to come here and speak tonight. I'm not speaking as an officer in Camp County Education Association or as a member of TDA or India. Here to speak as an individual. Most of you know I've been associated with athletics at Cameron County High School, either as a clock operator for football game for over 20 years, basketball for over 20 years. I've also had the pleasure of doing a little coaching at some of the middle schools. 
football. I see some of the things you're up against. Tonight, you're going to have to try to figure out some funds or a source of funds to take care of lights at Campbell County High School football field. You're, you're facing a major liability if somebody goes up there Friday night and gets electrocuted because those wires are bare. You've been told that. Your insurance will cover you, folks. You're going to face that liability yourself. That's going to be enough. Okay? There's other things up there. Uh, the mold, that's the baseball field, and we can't use it for our busy football teams to dress. That's been a problem that's been there for several years. I don't know that a new roof is going to fix the problem. Is the building sealed around it? I mean, like I said, it's existed for several years. Damage to the track. The biggest damage that came from that track in the last year was when the people went up there at first the football season to replace the lights. Why aren't they liable for some of that damage? That, that track is probably 20 years old. It does need to be replaced. And it's going to cost a lot of money. Uh, tennis courts was another thing that's supposed to have happened. Kimball County didn't have tennis courts. We don't have any tennis courts at any of our schools at all. Is that something we have to have? Again, and I'm not sure from everybody I've talked to, I'm not sure that you've got any really solid numbers. Have you talked to lighting technicians? I mean, there's only a few companies in the, in the country that are eligible or really should be hired to replace those lights up there that know what they're doing. The mold problem, that's health department issues, and that's part of the issue going on up there now. Uh, you know, I haven't heard anybody address the lease at Camden County High School and on that football field. As mentioned in this board meeting a year ago or so, we could save $100,000 a year. Is that something that's going to be fixed out of this money? Uh, I don't know if any of you attended the county commission meeting last night, but uh, there's a motion made to try to help support you. To try for them to put some money this way to go to some of these issues. Didn't even get a second. <laughs> Did not get a second. So is it likely that they're going to approve taking money out of the fund balance? Uh, right now, Campbell County, as for years, I've been here for approximately 30 years. My three kids went to Campbell County High School. They went to Jack Pearl Middle. They went to LaFalle, West LaFalle Elementary. And I'm proud to say that I am a teacher in Campbell County. When I travel the state, I go across the country to teach your community to where else. I tell them I'm from Campbell County. I'm proud to say that. But right now, if you look at what we've been spending year after year after year, we are consistently one of the lowest counties in the state on, on pupil expenditures. We're also facing some very low test scores again this year with ESSA coming in, what's facing us on all that. There's a lot of funds going to be needed. And, and I don't need to put the position that you're in right now because there's not any quick fixes. There's not any quick fixes. I do hope if you do, address some of these issues that exist at Kemp County High School uh, as far as the athletic programs and the needs up there that you do get professional. You don't have somebody even like LaFollet utilities. I just don't think they're qualified. I mean, I, I hope you don't have local contractors up there dealing with that mold problem. And you really don't know what that's going to cost. I don't think you've really investigated enough thoroughly enough to see what the real costs are other than asking somebody local what it might cost. My suggestion is you get engineers and people in here to really address those issues. Now, if you can come up with money for things like that, can't you come up with money to improve, you know, more computers, more technology? I'm not sure we're going to have enough technology. We're going to do testing in December at Camden County High School. Like I said, I don't, I don't envy your position. Somewhere, you know, you're going to have to bite the bullet. And I, and I understand that. Well, we haven't had a lot of planning and foresight, and that's kind of the nature of the business right now. And I hope that when you address these issues, you will consider it like your money. How would you address these issues at your home? And that's all I've got to say, and I appreciate your time. Well, Mr. Holder, we, we do appreciate you coming in and your comments, and I would like to speak on behalf of some of the comments you've made and see if any of the board, board members may have some comments. 
you, you mentioned, you know, technology, school funds, and all of that. And I would like to point out that this board, it is a priority, always has been a priority for us to address any education or school needs in, this, in, the, in the entire county. And over the last couple of years, you know, we've appropriated funds for around a little over $1 million for the new computers, for the CTE program, for uh, uh, computer labs in some of the schools. And, and, and uh, a pre-K school, a pre-K program at Win this year, we've appropriated a lot of money for that. And over the next uh, three years, we're going to be appropriating about 220, a little over $220,000 for new computers for testing, which will be utilized after the testing is over for classrooms and all that. So that is a high priority for this board. And, and we appreciate your, your comments about that needing to be a high priority because it is to this whole board. And, and we hope to continue to find funds through the next year to uh, supply more money to other educational needs. Uh, you know, this our committee over the last year has been working very hard and had several meetings on capital outlay projects throughout the county, throughout the school systems. And Mr. Nidifer has met with all the principals, and they brought a list to our committee. And uh, our committee has spent a lot of time uh, really reviewing that list. And just recently at our last meeting, you know, we sat down with the list. The original list was up around $2 million. A lot of capital outlay needs in this county. And, and we knew we couldn't come up with $2, $2 million. So what we did, we, we sat down as a, as a board, as a, as a committee, and we prioritized those needs based on safety for, you know, things get old over time. They deteriorate. And, and a couple of things you mentioned, you know, the lighting at the, at the football field, you know, we've, we have had a, a, an expert come up and look at those. And those foundations, you know, the concrete deteriorates over time, and they was put in in the 70s. So, you know, that is a safety issue that has been considered, and, and if we do choose to bring a contractor in, it will be a qualified contractor. It will be somebody that has expertise in doing that type of work, and that's the company that did come look at that. And I agree with you on the track. You know, we've, I've had reports that we've had several students that have had injuries because of the, the condition of that track, which has also been there for the 70s. So we looked at that as a safety issue. And those are two big expense items that we're talking about with this money. So I believe this entire board is really to look at all of the all of these capital outlay needs and prioritize based, number one, on, on, on safety. And, and, you know, the field house that we're looking at trying to get a roof put on it because the leak has caused the problems. And, uh, and I think, uh, Mr. Knifer, that, you know, the maintenance department's probably going to come in and look at cleaning all that out. It's going to save us a lot of money. Then I think we're going to use our building trades class. We've talked about that to come in and, and remodel that once we get a roof on to prevent this water from leaking. Uh, so we are, we have, along with Mr. Knifer and all the principals, look at this very closely. And like I said, we greatly appreciate your comments and well received. And does any of the other board members have any comments of any of that? Uh, coach Shouse is here. He is our track coach mm -hmm. for the Campbell County High School. And uh, I mean, he can tell you we, we had over 16. Mr. Shouse, would you stand up, please? Do you mind? Wasn't it uh, 16 sports injuries due to the condition of the track that we? Well, I, don't, I don't know if the exact number was 16. We had several. Several. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them went down. But very injuries. Yeah, yeah. Which that's a safety issue. And, and Mr. Excellent. Holder, you know, we are looking and we will be using qualified professionals that come in and look at especially the structural things like the lights, the foundations. Uh, you know, we're not, if there is a local person that's, that's qualified in that, you know, they may be considered also. But that's that's big ticket item who offer be it. And we will be looking at the highly qualified professionals to, to make a review on that. And I'm going to make a couple comments about that. Uh, as far as technology at Campbell County High School, our computers are down once a week, at least once a week. But we've still got some major issues up there. And we've been looking at that very closely along with Mr. Knight, for he's informed us that uh, this year that there's about $300,000 new money available through title that I believe is going to be distributed. I'll let you speak on that to help with technology. Is that correct? Actually, the board has rolled $221,000 last year, this year, and next year into our schools to improve testing. Um, well, we're, we're in, we're in, in December on computer. We don't have the choices. Well, we tested last year and, uh, and it worked out reasonably well through the JROTC building using it. Also, uh, where we have done a, a decent job tracking what we would call homeless children, uh, families that are in need, 
Title I received about three hundred extra thousand dollars that was drawn back into each school and the Title I committee of each school is the uh, group that decides what part of the technology or what they want to use that for. But you're right, we could probably spend $10 million tomorrow and not catch up, but, but it's the board's decision to uh, make evaluations from year to year now and see where that money can best be spent. And that's what we're in the process of doing. We'll continue to do that as a board, looking at that as a priority to us, this entire board as far as helping the technology and anything in education in our classrooms. Mr. Chairman, yes, I would like to um, tell Mr. Holden that this board has worked diligently just to reiterate what Mr. Bain has said. And if you had a, would look at our notes that we have had through the last few months, you would see that we have covered everything that you've brought to us tonight. And we appreciate your interest and your concerns, but uh, the board has worked with the principals. We've worked a sit down with worksheets and Excel sheets and we are on the right track and technology is definitely one of our main um, interests right now. But one, one of our goals is really to get all of this taken care of as far as um, our infrastructure, extra infrastructural needs so that we can focus on our grade cards and our level ones, level five teachers our professional development but we want to get all of these these uh, needs from our schools taken care of so we can focus on raising our grades and levels and enhancing our school system but um, I was just sort of smiling to myself and saying if you had looked at our notes you would see that we had covered every single thing that you brought to our attention tonight and we're on the right track and we are going to see some good things happen but thank you for coming thank you for coming it's really for the fun calls and what happens if disaster strikes up like it's happened in texas and florida in reference to in reference what to what would happen to him if disaster strikes us well, well, it would be a bad situation if that does happen and hopefully and pray it doesn't happen Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Holder, okay. Mr. Holder made one comment there that talking about county commission, uh, for those who are not aware, if this board gets six votes to transfer the million dollars tonight, and I think my attorney will agree, agree with me, uh, you know, the commission don't have to approve it. It's, it's already in our budget. And uh, actually there was an article on WLAF and they hit the nail on the head when they said uh, the school board requested the transfer from their own undesignated fund balance, but commissioners failed to turn their own old habit of attempting to dictate school spending despite the fact that they really have no power to do so under state law. Now, would you agree with that assumption? Yeah, that's correct. Dale Murphy, the community, saying that he did not have a single agreement with the Once the uh, money is put into the undesignated reserve funds, then the county commission does not have any um, way of restricting on that. Now, there are some state limitations on how those funds can be used. Right. But the county commission does not have the ability to dictate to you. My, my understanding is you, you can't use it for recurring costs. That's correct. I, I would just like to add that I think the board has demonstrated that we are concerned with the schools. We have uh, doubled what teachers get in expense allowance from $200 to $400 per year. I know that's not enough. Maybe at some point we can do more. Uh, but we have taken this seriously, uh, and we understand that the money is not our money, but it really is the kids' money, and we are trying to address the needs as best as we can, and I do spend it as I would my money, Mr. Holder. But thank you for that. I agree. And, and one other thing, I, I will elaborate on that when you mentioned the fund balance. The decision of our committee was made to do the fund balance because we looked at, you know, taking a loan out. This is saving the school system over $200,000 in interest. That's a lot of money that we're going to be able to save by going through the fund balance. And then over the next few years, our plan is hopefully to reimburse that fund balance so you're making a payment back to your fund balance interest-free versus making a payment on a loan. It's costing a lot of interest. 
so you know this committee evaluated that very closely and we talked with finance to, to get the assurance from them by taking a million dollars does not put any kind of financial burden on, on the our budget and they assured us that it would not and that we would, it would be just fine to take that out we still have the required amount of money left in fund balance to address uh, those needs mr bain richard had a yeah richard i'm sorry uh, just speak to a couple things for a moment. Um, what we discussed about with the million dollars coming from unlimited fund balance mm -hmm. was potential effect on the cash flow in some way. Right. Uh, and the commission having to approve the budget went to help them last night the committee meeting. My understanding is the uh, county commission has to approve the meeting amendment that would increase the revenue allocation, the appropriation of the school system, as well as any use of equity. Well, I mean, the thing that is, once something is in the undesignated reserve fund, then that's that's really not something that the, the county commission has any restrictions on anymore. Okay. I want a clarification too. Uh, sounds like we got too many cooks stirring soup, but. Correct me if I'm wrong. We've got eighty to eighty-five thousand dollars this year in projection when we were going to do the loan to pay back the loan. Correct? Say again. We've got eighty or eighty-five thousand budgeted this year for a payment that the loan we were going to get that was going to have to pay the three hundred thousand dollars interest on. No. no well, what happened to that money? Because we. So it's been used for something else. Well, one of the uses was, Mr. Knifer told me today, there's three uh, teachers at LaFault Elementary School in pre-K. We hired an additional teacher. It cost about $70,000, and there's only 16 kids. So we, five did, kids we didn't take year. that money out of Capitola? They took it out of the uh, debt service that we retired. So you got five kids per teacher. Well, this board, no. uh, we, that wasn't what we agreed on. I thought we, we had this board agreed that we were going to take it out of our capital outlay for one year, and uh, that was my understanding. We we retired one hundred thirty seven dollars, one hundred thirty seven thousand dollars worth of debt. Right. The next uh, debt retirement is twenty twenty five. Right. And out of that one forty, Mr. Knifer, you told me today that you didn't use part of that money to fund that teacher <coughs> position. Is that correct? Richard will have to research that and see if it can exactly update a lot of money. If that be the case, then we've got an additional seventy five thousand in our capital outlay. You know, I, I just say it's never good to borrow money when you have money. I just that just for me, I just don't see any benefit how any how you can justify borrowing money when you have money. Is that the same my pocket money is that we, if I'm not mistaken, Richard, we took seventy-five thousand dollars out of capital outlay, and we used that to fund the two hundred dollar per teacher increase in expenses. So we reduced capital outlay by seventy-five thousand dollars to fund that. Is that what you're asking? Oh. <laughs> I agree with you on the structural policy here. Okay. I'm going back to the preschool program. Uh, it seems like there was a movement of the fund, even by the textbook fund, for the addition of the preschool program. And uh, for the company's debt type of money, essentially replaced that in that value. Well, again, when we discuss that, you're talking about recurring costs. It might not be a recurring cost because we wasn't sure what the numbers are going to be at win next year. It just so happened they had 18 kids this year. They may not have three next year. Correct? Is that what we talked about? Yeah, I, I thought they had more than that, but you may be right at 18. And we had we had people from West Nepala telling us that, oh, we can't lose a preschool teacher. We've got 60, 70 kids. So now they're telling us we got 43. 
So if that's a problem, we need to correct it. At West LaFollette? At LaFollette. At LaFollette Fall 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 Elementary. Elementary. Mr. Dyfer told me today he's got 16 kids in preschool at LaFollette Elementary. For your class? Uh, Miss, Total. Miss Arnold's oh, back there. there. You, you know, we have 43 Miss Arnold's. Yes, sir, we have 43. And we have three classes, is that correct? That is correct. Well, what was you talking about those 16 today? 16 per class, I guess. That'd be about 16 per class. Okay, I stand corrected then. So, Mr. Birch, what your point is, I think, that we thought we were going to have 60-something students, so we had to fund an extra pre-K, and now we funded a, a program, or a, a teacher, that we might not have had to do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what is the maximum class size for preschool? 20. 20. How many? 20. 20. 20. I think that needs to be looked at very closely before we get into going next year with three, uh, three day programs to make sure we don't get into this situation. Uh, well, I'll say this much. I actually called Miss Walden, Jacob Elementary, and, right. and Miss Lori at Carroll, and if they would have been a very big waiting list, we'd have just moved them for the But there wasn't. Okay, any other comments on that? Okay, back to that 137. How much money do we have left out of that debt service that we retired? Um, I was thinking that uh, probably 70 for the pre K so And then we need 85 to pay ourselves back? Um, I think they don't have any years to uh, We have but the money will be replenished back into the debt service. Uh, if, uh, if you I thought we still had, so I guess our, our first replenish will be next year, next year's budget. Right, still that, is correct. that is correct. Okay. Okay, uh, Ms. Marlowe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Um, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit uh, confused and Discombobulated, you're discombobulated with all the information I'm getting. And Miss Heatherly, I absolutely totally agree that the list you guys made and the conversation you had about it and the preparation you made is beyond compare. However, I feel that all the needs that you guys addressed in that list was based on some of the conversations that each one of you have with some person. Now, nobody asked me because I'm not a coach. But no, I'm, and I don't mean anything. Coaches are notorious for coming and asking for a lot of things, and teachers aren't. And I know that because I've been standing here for years and years asking for things for teachers. How long have I asked for a desk, Mr. Miller? Well, I never did get one. I never did get one. Um, and I want to say that um, I wouldn't care to bet you that 75% of the teachers in this county have substandard student desks and substandard teacher desks in their classroom. Those facilities are never updated. You update the technology, and uh, the lunch people update their stuff all the time. It looks great. The sports programs, they update their equipment and things all the time. Teachers don't get anything in their classrooms updated, and they don't go ask. Um, the $220,000 you're talking about in technology, uh, they're talking about putting new Promethean boards in because 
Most teachers don't have chalkboards anymore. They use Promethean boards to teach with. And um, I bet you could go up and go down the halls tomorrow at Campbell County High School and you'd find that the bulbs are blown in the projectors and a whole lot of those. And they've not even been able to use what they have to teach with. But they don't say, I need a bulb. They feel like that's something you ought to be able to give them to teach with. And we don't come down here in droves and beg for things. Um, how much is in the fund balance? A little over four million, four point something. I don't exactly for what it read. Four point two million dollars. And what you're going to take out of it is eight hundred to some thousand. A million, million dollars, million dollars which will leave dollars. about uh, 1.8 million dollars above what's required by the state. We're required to have three percent maintain that in the fund balance. It'll leave approximately, uh, Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, I earned the number, approximately about an extra one, uh, 1.8 million above what's required by the state will still be in the fund balance That's after we move. That's approximations. So if there was a catastrophic event happen, we had to use it. Um, don't you have to use some of that for working before you get it paid back during the school year? That is, that's the cash flow I think you're referring to that we talked with Richard about, and there's enough cash flow to, to maintain that. Uh, without any issues. We has got really close a couple times. What happened, Vince Barlow, is taxes don't start coming in until October. So, property taxes. Okay. Um, Mr. Walter you know, you've got water leaks at Campbell County High School. You've got an auditorium that's getting ready to fall in. You've got old furniture in almost every classroom in this county. You've got out-of-date Promethean boards. Um, they put in heat and air that you can't adjust the thermostat on, and I wore a jacket and socks every day, every day to school for three years. I froze. And you're going to use that savings and fix the track. years. 
<laughs> They're breaking you in right, Clint. <laughs> You'll be all right, though. Well, Miss Sharon, on a positive note, there are desks, new desks, in that because it was brought to our attention. But there are so many things that we cannot do all at once. But we've taken these lists and compiled them, and and I'm with you. You know, I really think we ought to do more for our classrooms, and we're working on it. And I, I would would love for you to come back in a in a few short months once we've allocated this money and we've distributed it and see what we've done with it. And we always welcome you because two heads are better than one. And you are always welcome. Anyone's always welcome. To, we encourage anyone to come to any of the workshops, any of the meetings. You know, and our list is, like I said before, is comprised over the requests from our principals and our school system. And some of the things you just mentioned have been talked about and, and mm -hmm. we're going to address. Uh, you know, some of those things are going to get addressed. $300,000 spent on furniture we've talked we've talked desk about this we we've probably talked. should have took we probably should have took that 153 thousand dollars we gave that you were in support of for sick pay for teachers and spending on this well, I didn't know you were going to do this or yeah. 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 Because that it, it is what it is you know if you're going to have athletics you've got to you've got to find it you've got to have facilities that say and also, if you want to go up there to Campbell County High School and tell them track parents and teachers and, and everybody that we're not going to have a track, we're going to plow it up, then, you know, good luck. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, if we're going to have, if we're going to have sports, we have to fund it. You know, and it's just not just line. funding the track because we have had a, a tremendous amount of athletes come out of this county and scholars, students, right. academics that have gone on scholarships because they have a sport to play, so therefore that is an incentive for them to keep their grades up and not drop out of school. So they've gone on to college to make something of themselves. So, I mean, it's a catch-22, and I, I do understand what you're saying, and I understand that we need air conditioning in the gyms because our children play volleyball in there. In the summer, we have practices, we have camps. Um, the elementary school, I mean the middle schools as well, they have volleyball games in there those children and parents and like you said the PE classes it you know it's it's hard but you have to look at things like if you the academics are important but so are sports because the sports kind of gives them an incentive to keep that academic going and not every kid plays a sport that's true you have children in band so we have to maintain our band situation so the children that don't play a sport would rather play an instrument has a chance to get a scholarship to go on to do other things as well. So, Does any other board members have any other comments? No, thank well, you, Karen. Thank you so much for coming. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, next on the agenda is Mr. Chad. Is that Jerry Chad? It's Tom Chad. <laughs> Uh, Jerry, uh, congratulations, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you so much. Uh, evening, Mr. Director, members. Uh, there for a long time, I thought I was going to get up here and say amen, hallelujah, to what Ms. Marlowe was, was uh, putting forward. But I, I uh, thought several times about not coming to speak tonight, but uh, finally decided that as a taxpayer, there were a couple of things I did want to say. So I'm, I'm here as a taxpayer uh, in Campbell County. And I want to talk a little, just briefly, about my expectations for how my tax dollars are spent when it comes to public education. And uh, we all know I'm I'm a sports fanatic. And uh, Ms. Chapel back here is currently a baseball widow, about to be a baseball and football widow, widow, and then just a football widow. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm a sports lover. I supported sports at every school I've been to. But in our public education system, we kind of have two tracks. One, one part of it is compulsory, and the other part is voluntary. And the academic part is the compulsory part. We have to do that by law. And we're not doing it as well as we could be doing it. And I'm not blaming just sports for that. but. I'm here to ask that when we go down this list of priorities, we think about what percentages of this money that we're borrowing from ourselves, we're taking on public debt here. I want everybody to realize this is public debt we're taking on. We're borrowing from ourselves and we gotta pay ourselves back. 
again, out of tax dollars, right? Uh, so anyway, I'm just asking that you take a real hard look at what percentage of this money we're taking out of the fund balance is going to academic pursuits and what percentage is going to athletic pursuits. And I think we need to put a real high priority on the athletic pursuits. Safety is important. I, I don't doubt that. Uh, if I was coach, I know that I understood your explanation that the, that the injuries weren't all direct pointed at the track and may not have all been uh, related to the incidents of the track because I think you would probably shut down the track team if that was the case. That's what you do when you have a safety issue, right? Uh, so I hope it doesn't get to that point. But we're also talking about what percentage of the students are involved in the academic pursuits is the only one that involves 100% of our students. 100% of our families are involved in the academic pursuit. Most of us choose, to, many of us choose to participate in sports. A lot of us get great, a, a few, not a lot, a few get great benefits from participation in sports. So all I am is out here as a taxpayer to ask you all to give serious consideration to highly prioritizing those academic pursuits when you allocate these public dollars. And I will be the first one to write a check when the boosters come to, to fundraise for the track, for the tennis courts. I mean, come ask me, come sell me your cards, come sell me your cookies, your donuts. I won't even eat the donuts, I'll give them away because I've had enough lately. But um, yeah, I'm all about fundraising for sports and I want the community behind the sports. I also want the community to do both of the paying for the sports and let, you know, out of their voluntary commitments and let our tax dollars go to the educational pursuits like the law requires. And I guess I probably said too much. But thank you, Mr. I President. appreciate you coming in. And I, I just want to agree with you 100%. I think on behalf of this board, that priority, I said before, priority number one is for the educational needs of the schools. And you know, I went through what ago that and it explained the, the needs that we have in the capital outlay. Those are needs that you have to address in the school system, also. I mean, right. things start falling apart. So, educational needs is a number one priority for this board, and I fully agree with that. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Could I just yeah. add one last thing? Sure can. Richard uh, can back me up on this, but I'm thinking from some of our budget meetings that 82 percent of our budget goes to personnel. Is that Correct. Is that close to the figure? So that leaves 18% for us to fund every other thing, academics, sports, um, you know, buildings, upkeep and everything. So I just wanted to make that note. $11 million. How much of the BEP money goes toward the building fund? Uh, it's about 20 million. Yeah. 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 A million two fifty every year. Right? right there's where the complaint needs to be because we're we're paying for buildings that uh, you know that we need to be using in the classroom, like what Miss Marlowe talked about. But, but that's another story. And, but, that's right. And another thing, uh, they keep talking about the track and what, does anybody have the list? It's, of our, for the, so this made it sound like we're spending a million dollars on the track. Yeah, we do have a list, you know, I'm going to say there are there is several items. Is that list in our packet? No, no, it's not in the packet. No, but that's the right, man. The list I'm talking about is what we talked about in our last uh, workshop for the uh, capital equity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there are several, several items on this list. And uh, you mentioned track and lighting. Those happen to be large priced costs. I mean, it's because they're what they are. So, you know, percentage on item per item, I mean, the majority, of, I mean, in my opinion, it's, it's not athletics we're spending this money on. We're spending it on safety of facilities, bottom line. It just happens to be in a sports facility. I mean, the lights happen to be at the football field, but you know, it's a safety issue. Uh, the track. It's, uh, we're not building a new track. We're repairing and uh, fixing the current track. It's just the deteriorating condition that we're having accidents occur with our with our students. So you know we do have this list here. I mean, I'm not going to read everything on there, but uh, is the uh, repairs with the water leak? Is it on here? 
No, and we've talked about that's a hundred thousand dollars. The water leaks have been fixed. That's what I'm the main about. water leaks are under the building at the high school. Well, right, and we've talked so. about probably having to look at hiring someone to go in and find out what kind of leak we have under that building. Is that right. Correct? Well, Rector Miller's sitting back there, and he's a contractor. Rector, wouldn't you spend fifty thousand dollars to correct a hundred thousand dollar problem a year? Absolutely. And you do remember back. You know, we had trained to do, do a $4.5 million investment in our schools. It didn't cost the county. Absolutely nothing. You right. might want to consider talking to them again because we were scheduled to go into phase two. And they also have grants for that lighting to where when you put the right type of bulb in there, they'll save so much electricity, you'll help pay for it. Yeah, they that. mentioned that at the fall uh, seminar. Uh, they they like had LED, had LED lights or different type of lights can save electricity, Absolutely. and that's something yeah. we will, yeah, I think it will, it will be looked at. Good but uh, we agree, we're throwing Sorry, no. bad money at good dollars. Yeah. We don't repair that leak. Those leaks, not just a leak. Okay, uh, we'll move forward with the uh, with agenda. Uh, <laughs> Consent agenda. Did I have a mo Can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion we approve. Uh, second Morton, the motion. Second. Uh, Haley, give us a second. Uh, is there any discussion? If not, please cast your vote. So, do we just need to do a voice vote? Yeah. Yeah, that's yes. fine. Do a voice vote. We don't want to reset through that, so. Yes. 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 Yes, we did have, I mentioned that earlier, the addendum that was in the, that was put to the consent agenda that I mentioned earlier about the cross-country track thing. But this addendum goes in the regular agenda. Yeah. You said it goes in the regular agenda? Or it goes under B3. Yeah, that would go under the regular agenda. So, mentioning again that the addendum, the addendum that we do have is proven Campbell County's cross-country team to travel to Nashville and also to travel to North Carolina. So can I have a motion to approve the regular agenda? A motion. Mr. Reiner, I have a second. Thanks for going to the second. Any, is, is there any discussion? Not? Oh, I'm sorry, Richard. Yes. Which one? We have approved the consent agenda. It's under the consent agenda. Yes. Corey? Yes. Bain. Yes. Bird. Yes. Creekmore? Yes. 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 Okay. Comments from chair. Uh, no, I'd just like to say I greatly appreciate the board the comments that you all had in electing this chairman. I will do the best I can to represent this board the best of the ability, and uh, I appreciate that. That's the only comments I have. And uh, Mr. Nineford, uh, director's monthly report. I'll be briefing your uh, yellow folder. You have information on staff. Also, you have information on your folder on the field 831 about including uh, the fish brush on the sea trends have been added to the consent agenda. Uh, there was some information out there that the board might want to consider approving naming of the soccer field, maybe the horse board field. Uh, Whoever the board members of uh, Campbell County High School that district might want to look into that. And we talked about the nursing needs in the county. So most of the items that I had to, to address the board have already been discussed. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay, we can recognize Richard, uh, 7 8 financials. 
Motion to approve the monthly financials. Motion. Mr. Lester, I have a second. Second. I have a second from Mr. Burge. Is there any discussion? Take vote. Yes. 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 Okay. We've got a few budget amendments and resolutions to discuss. Mr. Richard, do you want to go over those? Uh, sure. Thank you. Uh, resolution number one from the Super
Second. Second the motion. Okay, is there any discussion? Please take the vote. Yes. Bain. Yes. Third. Yes. 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 Fields. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Yes. Okay, do I have a, can I get a motion to approve resolution 9-13? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we adopt resolution 9-13. A motion for Ms. Heather. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second for Mr. Bird. Is there any discussion? I have a question. Okay. Mr. Nineifer, do you support this in its entirety, the way we're doing this? Well, the, this working uh, board has met several times, and uh, there's no doubt about it for safety issues. If you let everything else off the, uh, off the map, the lighting at Kimball County High School, the football lighting, is going to have to be fixed. And I wouldn't even recommend playing next season. Now, how this board so desires to fund this, uh, it's really, there's a 10 member board here and you need to cast your vote. And in my world, I would probably, I would be totally against Mr. Morgan over there, but I respect him entirely. I would probably borrow the money because you're looking at about a $16,000 interest per year and uh, sometimes borrowing money is not a bad thing. But I do think you have some issues out there that need to be addressed, and I think this board has worked on this long enough and hard enough that it's time to move on some of these issues. You know, I talked to Richard today and give you some statistics and trends. The last three years, we've lost 157 students. That totals of $1.1 million in revenue. And Johnny brought up her a minute ago about Miss Marlowe and that $150 increase. If some of those teachers hadn't retired, and we hadn't changed that MOU to end, not in October, that's the end of June, we were at a point, Larry, I think we we're gonna have to lay some teachers off. We're getting very close, is that correct? Well, that's true, uh, we had a tough budget. So why would we not keep our fund balance and do some of the projects? That's what the, that's what your uh, uh, debt service is for, is to go out and do your debt service on things that you need. It's hard to replenish for a million dollars. Like Sharon said, how long has it take it, taken us to accumulate that money? I think Campbell County was incorporated in 1878, and we've got four million dollars. We got some nice schools. I would like to know where you could borrow a million dollars for sixteen thousand dollars in interest. Yeah, I was say that. <laughs> Sign me up for that. Well, it's two hundred five thousand dollars over twelve years. That's seventeen thousand dollars a year. That's what I mean. I'm sorry. Okay. Basically, so over 12 years, you're actually talking to somebody to do the math on that? $180,000 or more? No, it's $205,000 over 12 years. A payment. But $17,000 at his interest, what you're taking. Per year. Per year. Yeah, and our budget's $55 million. That's $170,000 and then 20, 34 more. So that's $204,000 we're saving by and not borrowing money. That's pretty simple math to me. I'm a simple guy. But I don't have to agree with everything. And that $17,000 per year equals point zero 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 three of our budget every year. It equals $17,000 per nurses year. Nurses want nurses. You know, we can fund some nurses. We just don't use all of our capital money. We can't fund nurses if we borrow money. We can come up with a plan to hire some nurses. We sure can. Well, that will be... Tony Bruce back there. No, he skipped out on us tonight. Down. Last too much too prior. But I'm not against the projects. I just think that it's taken us a long time to, to accumulate our money, and we don't know what next year is going to be. Richard went, went one step further for me, and he ran the numbers from 2005 to, to this year, and we've lost 680 students. The trend is going down every year. If you lose another 50 students next year, Steve, that's $350,000. Who's going to make it up? Well, if money. you're losing teachers, you're going to have less uh, losing students. You're going to have less teachers. So now That's right. That's how we and avoided laying people off. And it will be harder to pay interest if you have less income. 
Well, I have a question. Yeah. Um, if we did this out of the fund balance now in another year or so, and it became necessary, could you take the loan out of the retired debt then? Would that be a possibility? No, because you're using the $85,000 to pay yourself back. Right, Richard? That's fine with discussion. You, you know that, Richard. Right. Is the finance department, from my understanding, at our last meeting, you all recommended that we could sustain this and it was okay for the board to do this. Are you all still taking that stand or has it changed since last week? Uh, the position hasn't changed. Uh, what they've yeah. been asked is what could be done. There's been threats that the buses are going to shut down and all this. If it is, we'll borrow the $100 million in. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. We've got some needs that we've been talking about for. Uh, I've been on the board 17 years, and the lights, Mr. Miller, we talked about them when you were on the board. We got some issues that's got to be fixed, and we, if we can sustain it, why waste $300,000, $200,000 taxpayers' money on interest when it's their money anyway that we're going to use to do the uh, upgrades with? So I say we uh, call for a vote. We have, and I guess we're, was there any other discussion? Robert's Rules of Order, if you call for the vote, you have to take a vote on it. Okay. Do what? Oh, well, that's right. He didn't yeah, call for okay. Vote. So can I get a motion back to... We don't Bruce. got a motion. We, so. we got a motion in a second. We have a... You've got to take, take a vote on the, his table or his motion yeah. to... Uh, Call for the question. Got a vote on. What did you, what's your vote? Call for the question. Call for the question. Vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I have a second? Okay. Any discussion on that? Take a vote. No. Yes. 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 I'm abstaining. Fields. Yes. Gomez. Yes. Heatherly. Yes. Lester. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Right. Yes. Motion. So now we have to make a motion for that resolution again. Can yeah. I get a motion? Vote on the motion. Can I get a motion? You've already got a motion. I've already got a motion. I've already got a second. I'm bringing a pass. No. Yes. Yes. Creek Moore. The motion to approve the resolution. Oh, I'm abstaining. I'm sorry. Abstaining. Abstaining. Fields. Yes. Owens. Yes. 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 Morgan. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Next thing I was uh, reviewing the bids. <laughs> Richard? Uh, yes, we had uh, one bid, so can I get a motion to approve the bid on the refrigeration? I have a motion from Mr. Reiner. Can I get a second? I have a second from Mr. Goins. Is there any discussion? Not, but thank you about Yes. Bain. Yes. Bird. Yes. Creekmore. Yes. Fields. Yes. Goins. Yes. Heatherly. Yes. Lester. Yes. Morgan. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay, request permission to advertise bid. We have nothing at this time. And request permission to accept the rules of contract. We have nothing at this time. So with that, we'll get an update from Ms. Comer on the individual school activity funds. I'll make it quick. Are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a question. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, um, um, when, example, CTE, their classes earn some money and they put it in a fund back to school. Is the school 
able to take that money out of the fund and use it for what they need? Or is that a designated fund? I'm talking or about the school. I'm or talking the about sponsor of the CTE. Now I'm talking about the school. Preferably the principal. Now the principal has the right to take that money out of that account. When it comes down to it, the principal is the one that's solely responsible for every penny that goes in and out of that school. The majority of the time, the sponsor is in agreement with the principal. Um, I know my first year at KMK High School as bookkeeper, my principal there instructed me to take, if you may be the uh, director at that time, um, three or four different funds, transfer the thousand dollars out in order to make a copy of payment for the school. Uh, you can transfer from a restricted to general, but you cannot transfer from general to restricted. Well, that's a common practice that we have. It's not school. common, no, not not common. Belco High is, School had a had one of them done. And I think it was, you know, I think that it would be courtesy to ask that sponsor instead of taking it out of the fund. How much was it, Sharon? Uh, it's for more for the school, so we're talking a couple thousand dollars. It's not like three or four hundred dollars. That's my mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Rodner, uh, I think that occurred during the last, last of July. That reimbursement went back to that program this week. Very good. It did, yes, ma'am. Those programs were a part of that. Where did the reimbursement come from? It came from the county. It came from the, you know, the field of health care. There was some fun set up there. Well, anyway, yeah, well, there was some money from uh, a re reclamation program that was set up in the fund for Jellicoe Elementary and Jellicoe High School. It was several thousand dollars, but it wasn't a left over capital. Yeah, that was for a used reel mower that Mr. Fields from Deerfield helped get for the football program in Jellicoe. So. I thought the reclamation was over in Jellicoe. It was. That's for the Okay. You said LaFalle Elementary or something. Was it more for the school? I think it was $18,000. <coughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. At, at Jellicoe? At Jellicoe High School, yes. I thought That's it was. My understanding. I, I thought it was $2,400. I'm talking about the reclamation check. It was $18,000. So that one has been. That reimbursement did go in this year. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Faye. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Okay, items for action. First on the agenda is to discuss taking administrative action regarding the start of the director of schools search process. So, do I have a motion to begin the director of school search? I have a motion for Ms. Reiner that we begin the search. Do I have a second? I second the motion. Two seconds. Who wants it? I'll give it, oh, give it to No, give it to That's whoever. <laughs> we'll second the motion. Is there any discussion? No. Take the vote. For it. Yes. Nine. Yes. Hard. Yes. Three, four. Yes. Fields. Yes. 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 Next item is to discuss and take any uh, necessary action regarding repair of gymnasium bleachers at Campbell County High School. I had that put on there. Uh, I got a call from Miss Wither at the high school about some of the sections of bleachers at the high school, and she just got a couple of quotes. And the company that came in and looked at it, uh, there is one section definitely is a, is a safety issue. Uh, over the last year, uh, there's there's a a lot of things wrong with them. I don't know. I had the list here. The framing's messed up. The motor's on you know, it's bad. Um, one section of the bleachers. I think she told me there's three sections that are dire need of repair for safety issues with people getting ready. You know, with bleachers come basketball season or during the school with kids getting on them. So I guess what we're going to end up, what we're going to need to do is the the amount. Her lowest quote was uh, around eleven thousand dollars. So. Whereas of right now, we're going to have to, if, if the board wants to, we're going to have to take bids on that. So 
do I have a motion to solicit and advertise for bids? Well, we don't have that on here to even do that, so we can't do that this board meeting. So uh, any action really will have to wait and take bids on that or coming up near and shortly is our one of our policy changes over amounts that it requires to take bids or not. Lisa, so you got to create a scope, right? Yeah. If, if we a scope for the bid? Yeah. yeah. So I don't even know if you can create a scope for that or not. <laughs> Yeah. It went from fifty-eight hundred dollars last year. It's actually, 49, why we didn't fix it, I don't know. Forty-nine hundred dollars last year was quote. Forty-nine. Mm -hmm. It went from forty-nine to eleven thousand because we didn't do the forty-nine. Now it's costing us eleven. So, hey, how much money does uh, Campbell County have in their uh, general fund? As of August, they had nineteen thousand dollars. And what about the restricted fund? The restricted fund. I'm looking at a sheet here that you gave me. It says August 1st through August 31st, Campbell County High School beginning balance 240000 Yes, that includes restricted and general. Okay. Yes. And if you look at the report, it breaks it down by general. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had 19000 in August 31st for general. In the athletics, they had 112,000 class accounts, $95.25. Well, would that not fall under that category of athletics to pay for those bleacher repairs? They got $119,000. Well, uh, here again, general athletics, and they had 3,859 dollars and 94 cents. The boys basketball. They have $9,574. I have to see how much of that's already been obligated for the uniforms because they have to pay, uh, place those orders. But can any of that money be used for that? It could. We can't take action tonight. I don't want to know. Yeah. Uh, just a question. Where would that money come from if we vote to approve it? Well, Capital outlay? <laughs> we just add another $20,000 to uh, our note. That's what I'm saying. There's nothing. There's the money's not there right now, as far as I know. Capital outlay. So, it. Now, once the money's moved over, what we talked about. From the fund balance, it, it could be in. Because we looked at 800. I've been told I'm not, I didn't go up and inspect the bleachers that was told the two companies came up there that they're in bad shape. And I know the one section is they, they can't even get them pulled out and pulled back in. So. And that's something that would need to be done before basketball season. Yeah, Johnny, really you said that went from 5,000 to 11? Yes. Uh, yes. For not fixing it. For not getting fixed. Three more sections have been repaired. Over having to shove that back and forth, my understanding is now the frame where it was broke, the motor is messed up. And That's another 100000 It's more than a hundred thousand. We got split from that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is going to be getting the scope for the bid. Uh, could we ask Ms. Comer to get with Ms. Wheeler and Ms. Chapman and look at their funds if they have the money to fix them and then reimburse them later? That's what Mr. Knight just and mentioned to me about do, doing. They, they wouldn't have to bid it, right? They could fix it. No, they'd have to bid it. They'd have to bid it. It's over ten thousand dollars. No, it's changed to twenty-five thousand dollars now per the General Assembly in Nashville. It gets approved. Yeah, they can do that until we get the policy. Does the school mm -hmm. have to bid it, or Richard? Two. I don't think they do. They do. The General Assembly does passed. Thirteen thousand dollars. I think yeah. it, my understanding is, if I'm, unless I'm incorrect, if it's over ten thousand dollars, the school may still have to build it. Bid it. Is that correct? Okay. okay. When I call, but I'm not. I wasn't sure of that. I just, 
Well, I called TSBA during our last workshop to verify that that law is, you know, I gave it to Richard um, to verify that law is in fact in order right now, in place right now. And he said, uh, Ventoria said, yes, it is. It was passed in the General Assembly. And it became law, I think, was it July 1? But Do we have to adopt it? No, it's state law, and state law supersedes any local. So we need to change our policy procedures. We're going to cross. I think the policy. I think the policy's in what we're voting on. It is. I know it is. What was we going to? Eleven. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bird, I believe Mr. Snyder's going to look at exactly what you recommended and see what we can do and trying to move forward as quickly as possible on getting this addressed. The policy changed. The, I might have to ask legal on that. It, it, what we're talking about here is that state law that allows to go up $25,000 without taking bids. So on the agenda tonight is to, for us to change our policy. <coughs> and does that have to be approved by county commission before we're allowed to uh, go by that state law? I was told by Mr. Torres at that workshop that it that it was in place right now. It but is in place. we can do further checking on it if you feel like it's necessary. But that was from him. So does that mean we can do it without that's where I don't know. Can we do that without county commission approval? That's what Richard's According, saying. According, if it's state law. If it's a state law. Because state supersedes. state law supersedes any local, right? Daniel, I, 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 generally speaking, that's entirely true. State law supersedes, and that being said, state law is kind of the outer limits, and so you can always do something lesser or vice versa. And so um, if you're going into with regard to procedure, um, you know, I, I think that state law is what trumps, but I don't know that's a bad idea to be on the board of both you all and the, the county commission on the same page. Right. There, there's any, there's okay. why the, the I don't think they'd have county. any problem with it. There's any harm in it. Right. And I think that's the procedure you know, we're yeah. moving forward with our policies to well, this policy don't have to go to them for their approvals. That's what you're bringing up. It's, I think that's something. Do I? Yeah, we're on the first reading. Let's just. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay, move forward. Now we have a lot of policies to address tonight. And I don't think, Sharon, are you going to speak on that? Or Ms. Fay? I definitely want to say I want to thank the policy committee. I know y'all spent a lot of time going through this. And the first thing on here is consider approving new new policies on the first reading. So I'm going to kind of turn that over to one of you all if you wanted to address those new policies before we act on them. Okay, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the committee has gone through. We've spent about four hours looking over all these kinds of look at it. The first group is C, um, 5.6006.411, 6.415, 3.219. Does the board want to uh, take action on all these together or separately? You want to do it? Set together? Is okay? Yeah, okay. Is that okay? Okay. Part D then is uh, first reading where it's on audits. Well, I was, was going to okay. I'm sorry. You want, I just want to refer to, we want to act on C first and then D. Oh, okay. You, know, you all want to do that and then we'll move to D. Yes. Is that okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So can I get a motion to uh, approve the... Uh, board policies on the first reading for 5.60, 6.411, 6.415, 3.219, and 6.414. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. I have a motion for Mr. Lester. Can I have a second? I second the motion. I second for Ms. Fields. Is there any discussion? 
not, please take the vote. Yes. 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 Creekmore? Yes. Fields? Yes. Owens? Yes. Heatherly? Yes. Lester? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Yes. Okay, Sharon, I'm sorry about that. Now, on D, I think that's the uh, taking action on first reading for existing policies that are being revised. Is that right. correct? Yes. So, do you want to address anything on those? Most of them are just small things that we've added in there. Probably the one we've got the most revisions on is the sick leave bank. Mm -hmm. uh, the collaborative marketing groups have changed their way of doing some of that. So, we have tried to incorporate that into our policy. Okay. Uh, and the bid and operations, that 2.806 is the one we are recommending, the committee recommends to move from 10,000 to 25,000. So, this uh, over the, uh, for the first reading of the recommendation of the committee. Okay, does the board want to uh, take action on these as all together for D or take them as yeah. all together? All together? Yeah, okay, then I get a motion to approve. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Also, you may, um, just for record purposes only, to include the ones that have no changes at this time as well. Okay, do I need to include those into this uh, approval? Okay. I was going to go to that next. That's fine. That is part of D. So I'm also going to, uh, we're going to include the policies 1.81, 0.801, 2.802, 3.60, 5.301, 6.201, and 6.202. In this motion, also these are policies that no changes are being made. So, can I get a motion to approve uh, the policies on the first reading, uh, making revisions to the policies on the first reading for 2.703 through 5.603, and also accepting these policies 1.801 to 6.202 with no changes being made? I said a lot there. So. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. A motion accept. in this field. Do I have a second? Second the motion. A second. Ms. Hadley, is there any discussion? I got a question. Lisa? Yeah. Uh, you sent out this email, and I just want to be clear on this, uh, concerning that $10,000 to $25,000 threshold, and I think Jeff was involved in this. It says, if the Board of Education des desires to increase the bid limit to $25,000, then a representative from the Board of Education would need to approach the County Commission recommending the commission pass a resolution increasing that bid limit threshold from 10 to 25. Simply changing the Campbell County Board of Education policy will not increase the bid limit threshold. Only county commission can make such resolution. Is that right? That's correct. That's the way the, uh, the bill is going to be on all states. It says they have to pass a resolution. So I need to get a question for Monday. after we discuss with uh, legal and if we need to come to the uh, commission on Monday to make a recommendation for the resolution, we will do that. Okay. I just want to read that for Danny. Make sure that's, you may want to check that. Yeah, I think we all need to check. And I, yeah, everybody got the email. But anything that goes to the commission has to come here first, right? I mean, you all, if, if it is going to go to the commission, you all need to, to yeah. make a recommendation, which I think you all did. You didn't have the printer. That's what I couldn't understand about last night on the million dollars. Apparently they voted on it. We hadn't even took action. Yeah. Well, they were voting on it to approve it on for their agenda, Johnny. Okay. Take a vote. Yes. Thanks. Yes. 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 Yes.
Uh, one item for discussion, I think we were going to discuss the repair of the baseball field house at Campbell County High School. Any comments on that or any updates on that? Uh, Mr. Birch and I have worked on this most of the week. Okay. Uh, Richard and I, we have got it cleared for funding. Okay. Uh, we're going to put a new roof on it. As soon as we get the roof on it, we're going to send it up there. And we're going to spread that place down. D whatever we need to do from top to bottom and maybe I get the CT is going to build lockers and so on to go in there, but it's going to be stripped and clean from top to bottom. Any other discussion on that? Uh, discuss any legal matters? Everything? None of those are what we discussed earlier in that. And how are we going to handle that? Handle it. Yeah, Mr. Anderson, how are we going to handle it? That one, as far as, I'm sorry, I must have missed well, I missed something now. I missed something. Larry asked you about Mr. Anderson and us paying him. Uh, the, we had information from our uh, attorneys from Tennessee Risk Management. They recommended, I think you guys saw the email, That's that right. we just mm -hmm. pay him his back pay and move forward. Yes. I thought he mentioned it to you earlier. He did. I'm sorry, I didn't know whether that was actually going to be coming up tonight, but, but, but yeah, I, I don't see any. He did, you just said we didn't have to take action on it. Yeah, I, I don't okay. anticipate that that's something that, that has to be. Richard and I would have that. It doesn't hurt me to handle but. Uh, what was the dollar amount on that? 21000 It doesn't, doesn't hurt anything to take action on it, but I don't know if it's necessary. Okay. Okay, recognize the school board members. Mr. Morgan, do you have anything? I uh, do not. No. Mr. Springmore? No. A uh, fall district meeting is coming up the 19th, and Larry, I talked to Larry uh, earlier, and he said that we could use the ROTC van, that he would have it uh, clean and ready for us to all ride together. And I am so hoping that we have a good number to go. We've got several board members that are going to be awarded their boardsmanship levels, It's a, and they also are going to have a special session on Collaborative, collaborative conferencing, so it's going to be good. And Larry, what time would we need to meet here? Because we won't be together again. We're going to what? to no to Harriman. Harriman. Mm -hmm. And it's at what time? Uh, well, they start registration at four thirty. Did you say the nineteenth? The nineteenth. Nineteenth. Yes. All right, it's 4 30, 2 30. Let's sleep at 3. Okay. And the other thing I have is I would like for us to set a workshop uh, tonight for a date for our director search. Um, and I'd also like for us to set a workshop for to finalize our five-year plan because we do need to get it uh, finalized, printed, put it on our website, and then we need to use that to start working on our goal and our vision and how we're going to get there. And also, we need to refer to that five-year plan on a regular basis to see where we are on it. Because we're going to see some some uh, improvements in our academics, I think, when we go that route. Yeah, would, uh, Ms. Hedley, would, would next Tuesday be good on the director search workshop? Is it, if the board agrees to that, is everybody next Tuesday? That's the 26th. No, the... Next Tuesday. No, that was that's the fall district is next Tuesday. I thought it was the 19th. That is the 19th. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? What about Monday? What about the following Tuesday? The following or the Monday we could. Yeah. It's uh, either. What is the board? What's the board's preference? Is uh, what would y'all like to do? For the 18th or the 26th? Is that what you said? Yeah. 26 works better for me. 26. 26 for me. 26. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. What about the Monday the 20th? We had a Monday game from the weather. So Monday is a game. Monday the 25th would not. What about the 21st? Thursday. What about Thursday the 21st? Thursday the 21st. Let me look here. How's everybody? That's good with me. How's everybody? Yeah, I've got a long game to say. You do it at six. I mean, I can leave. Yeah, I can come here and go straight at home. 
what they know. Yeah. It's the 21st. Yeah. That's okay with me. Is that okay with y'all? 21st? At, you know, if it's 5 o'clock a better time to get it? Uh, the bus will be leaving uh, at that time, so I won't be. You know, don't let it hold up for me. Is the rest I mean, this the first meeting, we're going to sit down and think and start this talking about yeah. our timeline, getting everything going, just our, what, what we're going to go. We're not be voting on anything. We just have to you inform them on the time. Yeah, yeah. Inform them. Okay, so it's the 20, what do we say, Thursday the 21st at 5 o'clock at Central Office, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Location? Yes. Uh, 5 o'clock. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Uh, Mr. Orr? I don't have anything. Uh, I don't either, uh, Mr. Burge. I just want to thank Mr. Orr for the job he does as chairman. You're more than welcome, Mr. Burge. <laughs> yes, thank you, Mr. Orr. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I got a text today that uh, a professional guy that looked at the lights wants to meet at 3 o'clock at Central Office. And, I told him maybe the building committee chairman, so I'm assuming you're still there. Can I move that over to you, bitch? <laughs> well, tomorrow, well, tomorrow at 3 o'clock, I will. I mean, I can be there and meet with them. I'd like to have you there, too. Yeah, I've got a Wednesday. We've got that benefit thing for the, I'll be involved in tomorrow. Yeah, it's just an informational thing okay. for Mr. Nineford to start working on. So, I mean, he can meet with him as far as that. Oh, God, yeah. They, they do this. That's what I have to go to church. Oh, I got you. That's in your package, you have a section there, a school board policy section one and section three. We're going to start doing this the right way. Okay. We're supposed to take you know, a section a month, section, section one, which is the least change the problem that we've got on there. It should be in your package. Ms. Gail would make you. Uh, so she gave you section one and section three. You have some time in your spare time read through some of those. And then the committee can meet and if there's any in there that you feel like we need to make some changes to you can let the committee know the policy. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Congratulations, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, me and my guy enjoy serving on the board of You're welcome. Chairman. And I want to say I appreciate Miss Marlowe and Mr. Holver and Mr. Chadwell. I don't know where they went. They're always ad advocates for teachers and kids, and I appreciate you all. I know that's hard to get it, but I, I appreciate you guys. And all the principals that are here today and nurses that came on their behalf, I appreciate them coming. It's been a long meeting, but appreciate them. Okay. Jerome? Okay. Well, one thing, before the next board meeting, I'll, I'll be looking at the committees. So if anybody has any interest on any of the committees, please. Convey that to me through the month. Through the month, and I'll have that together. Uh, that meeting, uh, motion to adjourn. Make a motion. We adjourn.